So I found a way to think about how intense lasers interact with matter, a simple way to think of it, and as a result of that way, you can create shorter wavelength light from lasers, you can make shorter pulses, and you can ask materials to ask about themselves, look at themselves, look at the structure of themselves. So take a selfie if you like. I always found it interesting to think how intense light would interact with atoms and molecules. So it was really an interest that drove me in the first place. I felt it wasn't understood, so it was an open problem to think about. I thought it was a problem that was probably solvable, and so that also drove me uh, to do it, and I thought it might have important implications. So you, when you start to work on a problem, it's really general things like this that make you work on it. You have to choose an area to start on, and I chose it for those general reasons. So let's imagine you have an atom and you put an intense laser, a relatively intense laser. Now a laser is a wave, like a water wave. It's a wave of force on a particle, on a charged particle. So an electron feels the force. If you make it strong enough, the electron's pulled away and now it moves like a cork on a water wave and it can come right back and bash into the atom from which it left. And that bashing into the atom is the big contribution I made. It's so simple, isn't it? You can't imagine that's a big contribution. So I, I look at it in two ways to look at for the next objective, and maybe it's really two different directions for this kind of field. So it rose because we were thinking about how intense light interacted with materials, and so that problem still remains. It's an important problem. In fact, it drives machining, laser machining, uh, cutting glass and things like that is all done by intense light interacting with materials. There is an engineering aspect, but underlying that is also a science aspect of how it all occurs. So a young professor from Canada, his name is Harold Hogan, went to Aarhus University in Denmark as a new professor there. I don't know how long he stayed, I didn't know him at the time. But he returned to Canada in the mid-1990s to be a professor at McMaster University. And when he left, he convinced one of his graduate students, Hendrik Stapelfeld, to come to Ottawa to be a postdoctoral fellow in my group. So that's how I learned about Aarhus University. That's how I met Hendrik Stapelfeld. And of course, from then on, I've known about the university and interacted with them through Hendrik and through his colleagues. And I think this is all...